Hello everyone, welcome to week two of the boho prompt that Kylie Koo and I have got going on in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. For anybody that wants to follow along with our monthly challenges, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description box below. Now, this week I'm going to be working on a piece of picture framing mount board and I know that somebody is bound to ask, um, what does it measure? Um, let's have a look. It's approximately um, seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. This is just um, an offcut that um, I got from the, the scrap store. You don't have to use the same materials that, um, that I, um, or, or Kylie for that matter, use each week. Use whatever you have and interpret it in your own style. For instance, you could um, substitute this for just, you know, an ordinary piece of cardboard, maybe from packaging, use whatever you have. Now I'm going to start off by painting the background in some of this sky blue light paint. This is an Amsterdam um, acrylic. Um, this is my favourite colour of, um, of Amsterdam paint. Um, now, um, I get asked questions every time I bring out this paintbrush. This is um, a one and a half, one and a half inch, 3.81 centimetre um, um, flat head paintbrush um, and mine is by Craft Smart. It's a very, very in inexpensive one. Um, but I just get really good um, coverage with this um, with this brush. Um, and I think I got mine in a in a set probably from Hobbycraft or the range, somewhere like that. But um, they sell similar ones on Amazon and probably eBay as well. So I'm just going to go over all of this um, and I think it's going to take um, probably two coats of paint. So I'm going to dry um, my layers in between. So as soon as I've done this, I shall be straight, straight back. Isn't that colour just beautiful? So now that my paint is dry, I want to add this mandala design to my background. Um, this one came free in a magazine, um, but, you know, I think this one was free in a magazine um, as well. Um, this one here is a folk art one that you've seen me use before for a boho um, project that we did in the Facebook group um, either last year or the, or the year before. Um, I think this pattern here would be perfect, as would this one here. I think these are both um, peacock um, designs. Um, I've also got this one, which is another one of the um, folk art stencils. So, you know, I hope that gives you some ideas if you you know want to do something similar. Now, I'm going to use gold for my next layer and I'm going to use the Arteza um, acrylic paint for this. Um, this came um, in the set of 60 that I reviewed last year. I just love these paints. And again, I'm just going to apply some um, to just the piece of Perspex that I'm using as a palette. Now, I had a makeup sponge somewhere where's it gone now what I want to do um, before I start painting is I've also got some sellotape I just want to tape um, my stencil down because I don't want it um, moving um, whilst I'm doing my stenciling so I'm just going to pop some tape I'm just using a piece of um, white copy copy of paper underneath here um, so we'll stick that down like that so that should that should hold that in place. And then, as I say, I'm just going to use um, a makeup sponge. In fact, I'll do it like, like this so that it's slightly curved. And the trick with stenciling so that it doesn't bleed underneath is to not use too much paint. So we'll just start stenciling away. And I might need to give this um, a couple of layers as well. Try and hold your stencil as flat as well. Make sure it doesn't um, lift. And I'm going to go over the whole of my design like this. And as I say, I'm going to let the first coat dry and then I shall give it um, a second coat because I can see that I'm not going to get the coverage um, that I want just from one coat um, alone. Now, that's how my background um, is looking. I just love that so much. But I want a design for the left-hand side and I want um, some circles. Now, I'm using this baking um, tin here um, just because the circles are the right size. I've also got one of the um, Dilusions um, dot um, stencils. But the trouble is, these are random and I don't want um, a random effect in this case. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, apply a piece of paper just to cover the stenciling on the left because I don't want to on the right sorry I don't want to go over that um, by accident so again bring in some tape I'm just going to tape that down like that just to hold it um, in in place 
that will do that will do nicely then bring in my baking sheet and let's have a look i don't want to be too fussy about where i where i put this about there that will do fine and again i'm just going to um uh, stamp in exactly um, the same way. Now the other side did take, as I thought it probably would, did take two coats of, of paint. Um, so I know that this is going to require the same. And because I'm using such a thin layer, by the time I get to the bottom, um, the top layer has um, already dried. Um, but it's important that I hold this in place um, and don't move my baking tin. So as soon as I've done this, I shall be straight back. So let's see if I've managed to um, hold um, my stencil in place. I can see that I just want a bit more paint on that one there. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's lift it up. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, bit of a smudge there, but um, we can maybe fix that. That's OK. Now, because I'm me, I'm just going to take um, a small paintbrush and I'm just going to try and fix that dot there because I know that that will that will bug me so I'm just going to add some blue blue paint it's going to take a couple of coats there we go and drag that out and we'll do the same around this side here as well Now I'm really happy with my background and I have touched around that um, problematic um, polka dot there because that was just really bugging me. Now for my focal image I want to use this napkin here. This is one that I got um, in a set of four. Um, you saw me do a zebra a few months ago. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Um, but um, I got these as I say from, from eBay. Um, but if you wanted to do something similar I've um, downloaded some elephants from the public um, domain so we've got this one here and you could easily sort of you know put pieces of napkin and decorate this um, to get a, a similar kind of um, look we've also got some elephants here that were from um, coloring books there's that one there that one there as well so these are just um, coloring book images that again are free printables that one there um, this one here so I hope that's given you some ideas how you could um, interpret this if you know this appeals to you but um, you know using whatever you have now I am going to fussy cut this out um, just because um, I just want the elephant itself I don't want um, any of the napkin or at least I don't think I do and um, before I take the layers apart it's going to make it much easier for me to um, cut this let me just have um, a look. I know that some of that will fade into the background um, but no I am going to uh, fussy cut this out and I'm going to use this part here so what I shall do is just um, take the one panel um, apart just so that I'm dealing with less of the, the napkin and then I want a really nice sharp pair of um, scissors. These ones aren't too bad um, actually and I'm just going to fussy cut um, around the elephant like so. So I fussy cut um, my elephant out and that's how he's looking. The three plies are still together at the moment but before I glue him down um, I've got some polka dot washi tape which I just want to um, apply to the central panel. Um, whoops Daisy, just to break that up. I've already um, added some um, glue stick to this because as we know um, washi tape is not all that sticky and I don't want this coming um, undone. So I'm just going to stick that down um, like this. I just think it needs a bit of um, contrast in the middle. And if I can find where I've put my bone folder, um, no, I can't. So we we'll use a lollipop stick instead. I'm just going to burnish um, that down and trim, trim the edges. So the washi tape is stuck down really well now. Um, and this is what my elephant looks like now. I'm ready to take um, the three panels um, apart, the three plies apart. And I'm just going to be really, really careful um, about how I do this because obviously I don't want to um, tear it. So we'll take the one ply apart and there should be, unless it's already come off, there should be, oh no, here we go. There should be another one um, as well. 
So just make sure um, that you get rid of um, all of your plies when you're um, decoupaging napkins because otherwise you're you know, sticking to the bottom part um, and not the top. And of course, it's just at some stage going to um, peel off. So I'm just being really careful um, about this because of course I don't want anything to tear. Let's get rid of um, get rid of those. And so I want to glue my elephant down something like um, that. You can see that I fussy cut around it but I haven't been too particular about it. I've still got some white but by the time I glue it down um, you won't be able to see that. Now I'm going to use some matte medium um, to glue it. My um, top is completely welded otherwise I'd have dipped my paintbrush um, into the top so I'm just going to pour some on like this and I'm using a really soft paintbrush just to um, apply some glue like like this and then I'm just going to carefully um, adhere my my elephant. Now I can't remember whether I put um, any glue on the bottom here so we'll just add a bit more just to be on the safe side. There we go and then stick our elephant um, down like, like this. And I want to be really careful about this because, of course, I don't want it to um, tear. So I'm just being really gentle. And I'm just going to um, grab myself um, a piece of um, deli paper. Let me just make sure that I've got plenty of glue under, under there as well. Oh, I've got a blobby. Let me just get rid of, get rid of that. I'm just going to gently actually tease this out with my with my paintbrush. This paintbrush is really, really soft. You don't want a hard one here because you'll just tear it. So I'm just sticking this down as gently um, as I can. Now I can see that that leg has got a bit of a a bump in it and I haven't got quite enough glue here um, either so and then I'm going to apply another coat of matte medium over over the top there we go and the reason I chose the polka dot was because I thought it picked up the black and um, the charcoal grey in the elephant so I just love how that looks and so I'm just going to apply another coat of matte medium and then I'm going to have to be patient now and just let that dry before I do anything else um, to it. Just really smoothing that out to get rid of um, any, any air bubbles. Now I let the glue dry for a minute or two and then I used a piece of deli paper just to burnish the elephant down. I just went all over the top of it like this just to make sure that um, I got rid of any air bubbles and that the napkin was firmly um, attached. Um, and then I put a clean piece of deli paper down and just weighted it down underneath a heavy book just because my mount board started to um, warp so that's flattened um, it out. And then I used an emery board just to get rid of the excess um, napkin on the left hand side like that and so that's where we're at um, so far I think that looks lovely. Now because the napkin is translucent you can see here that where I've got the um, washi tape I've lost um, the detail just on this edge here and I'm not worried about that um, because I've pulled out some um, water soluble um, oil pastels I've got my neo colours and I've also got my um, prism colours you know anything Tim Holtz ones, Jane Davenport ones you know use what um, whatever you have and I'm going to try and use um, some similar colours um, in fact actually let's start off with the yellow of course we've lost um, the yellow flower here so I'm just going to try and um, add add that back in um, and then of course we've got um, the ear of the elephant which was um, in that lovely cerise pink so we can add that back in um, as well and of course these are nice and um, opaque so you know we just um bring that detail straight straight back in um i've got that flower there we can draw around it can you hear alex um singing upstairs um so that's that's that you know we've um and we can add some more over over here if we want to um as well brighten 
brighten that up so you know we can go straight over the top of what we've already got and of course it's um, protected by matte medium so if we make a mistake we can always um, rub it out and start again as well and then of course we've lost some of the detail of the leg of the elephant here as well so I'm just going to go over over that just to brighten um, that up whoops dropped my my crayon so, you know, anything that we lose, we can um, add back in. And then I'm just going to um, bring in some um, grey and I'm just going to go over the elephant like, like this, just to, you know, darken it um, back up again, just being really loose and scribbly um, about this. Because that's the design of the, the pattern. So we've got lots of lines we'll add this like like so i like how that looks but that's just darkened it and uh, made it more more prominent so i'm just going to you know cross hatch so i'm happy with how that looks and before i do anything else i'm just going to go around the outside of my elephant with a stabilo all pencil just to um, define it um, and just make it um, stand stand out. So we'll just go all the way around with the Stabilo all like this. And then what I will do um, is smudge this out just using um, a blending tool like, like so, just to give it a bit of a smudgy, smudgy edge like this. And I'll do this all the way um, around so I've gone around the edge of my elephant and that's um, made that stand out much better. And then because the Stabilo All is water reactive, I've just sprayed over with some um, pastel fixative. Mine is the Frisk brand. You could use cheap hairspray. Um, use whatever um, you have. Now, of course, the back of my panel is really messy. And so I just want to add some of the gold paper that I used for my tags last week. Now, I got this from the scrap store and I think this, um, is off uh, the stuff that they use um, for margarine um, tubs but I'm just going to um, use as I usually do a glue stick just to apply a good layer of glue all around the edge um, making sure that I pay particular attention to the edges so that it doesn't come unstuck and stick that down and that will tidy up my um, back of course you could paint it gold or any other color um, you like you don't have to do exactly the same um, as me do feel free to interpret these prompts in any way um, that you like don't ever feel that you have to rush out and buy the same materials that um, that I have you know, I just want you to know that uh, mine and Kylie's videos are just there to give you um, inspiration. That's all. Um, and hopefully, you know, share some ideas, um, spark, you know, interest and, um, you know, just set you on your, your way. So I'm just going to um, glue this down. Um, I'm looking for my bone folder or lollipop stick. I seem to have lost them um, both now. So I'm just going to burnish this um, down and then I can trim um, around the edges. So I've glued um, the back to my um, panel and that's how that looks. Really nice and tidy. And just to finish things off, I just want to add um, a few paper flowers so I've got these here and these are all from um, a set called um, Little Birdie Flowers. I got these from um, the range, I, I do believe. Um, but, you know, die cut flowers, use silk flowers, use whatever you have. You just don't have to have um, the same materials, as I've said before, as me. Now, I just want to go around the um, edge of these flowers just with some black distress ink just to define them before I glue them down. So I've got my distress ink here of course mine's covered still in quotes um, that I haven't got round to um, using yet so I just want to do this all the way around the um, edge I just think this looks um, really really nice we'll do the same with the other ones um, as well not too much on on these because of course you know these are are really subtle but I just think it makes them stand out um, a lot more I've got some leaves um, as well so we'll do the same um, to those. So there we go. I'm happy, happy with that. And we'll do the same with the, 
the leaves as well and then I just need to figure out um, placement and where I want these to to go and then we're almost done so let's have a look and see what we can um, do with this I'm thinking maybe something like like this and then I'm just going to glue that down with um, some Fabri-Tac um, I like that placement actually so let me just grab my glue um, and the hardest thing is remembering where you had everything positioned. So I'm just going to do this one um, first, a small blob um, in the centre. And we'll add that one there like, like that. Um, and then how did we have, have those? We had the leaf coming out like that under underneath. So again, I'll just add some glue there like, like that. And then we'll add these two um, here. I'll add glue to the backs first so that I can um, stick them down at the same, same time. And then the other leaf just needs to go under there like like that and I'm pretty happy with how how that looks now I just want to um, do the border of my um, page now and I'm just going to add some black soot all around the edge like this um, just to frame it um, here we go and I'm going to do this front and um, back as well and then I feel that I want to add um, a touch of, of gold as well so I'll do this and then I'll be straight um, straight back. So we'll add this to this side and then I want to do the same to the other side um, as well. Okie dokie, so that's what that looks um, like. And then I've got my um, Deco Colour um, pen here, my gold um, marker pen, and I'm just tapping some of the gold there and I'm just going to add this to that um, edge. And I think that will just finish um, my page off really, really nicely. Now, of course, this could be um, a journal page. This could be something that you use as a wall hanging. I mean, I could put this in a picture frame um, and it will be absolutely beautiful. You know, whatever you like to do with it. So I've got my gold border. I'm pretty much done. I just love how this looks but I just want to do one last um, finishing touch I just want to use my white um, Signo Uniball pen and I'm just going to add some highlights if I can get it to work around the edge like this now somebody gave me a tip a long time ago that if you can't get your pen to work just rub it out um, on your your hand it's a much easier way to um, get it uh, working. I love this. Um, and especially on the black areas here, this will just add um, a bit of contrast, just, you know, really loose, scribbly um, lines. Now I'm just putting some last minute finishing touches on here. I'm using my white gel pen just to add some vines to the leaves and you can see that I've just added some details to the flowers um, like this just a touch of um, white I just love how that um, looks been really loose and um, scribbly um, about this um, and I've done the same all around the um, elephant as well I love how that looks so this is my finished project. Now you'll see that um, I've added more of the black just using the Neo Color 2 to the um, leg of the elephant as well, just because I felt that it needed more contrast with the um, washi tape. I've also done the same with the ears um, and the leg here and just added more um, doodling using white Posca paint pens and um, my white um, gel pen. I'm really happy with how that looks. And I just love the gold on the side um, as well. So so that's how it looks and that's what it looks like um, on the back so I'm really really happy with that piece 
but I also want to share some more ideas with you as well. This was um, a decoupage box that I created before Christmas, again using um, a similar napkin to this one here. Um, I've added silk flowers to it. Um, the base is just um, decoupage uh, book pages. I've added um, sparkly butterflies. Um, this is um, a napkin that um, I had from Ikea and you'll find the links to all of these videos in the description box below i've got um, a whole playlist um called boho so there's that one there um i've also got some um boho um beads that i made one of my most popular videos here these are using sari scraps um some boho jenga pieces as well now this one here is using a piece of a snippet roll that my friend alma tolson sent me um this one here is made using just a small piece of um, one of the Art by Marlene papers. I've also got this altered um, jigsaw puzzle piece here, very boho using Art by Marlene products. I just absolutely love that. Um, and then finally, um, I've got um, a folio that um, I made, very, very boho using one of my boho beads. And this was um, Tracy Fox inspired. And as I've said, you'll find um, the links to all of these um, videos in the description box below. So that's it for from me for today i'll leave the link to the mixed media emporium in the description box below for anybody who would like to follow along with this particular prompt um, i'll also leave the link to kylie's video as well because of course she'll be sharing her particular take on the boho prompt this week um, but if you enjoyed my video this week as always i'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care everyone i'll see you all again soon bye for now